Hi guys, this is going to be a bit of a follow-up video to my Carnival of Chaos Mordheim Warband. Gruffy Crow! Okay, so, uh, I said these guys got pretty much fully painted. There's a few more that need a few uh, little extra bits of paint. On the most part, uh, these got painted and they performed adequately in a, a Mordheim campaign. Now, we're restarting the Mordheim campaign in uh, the next week or so. Um, so I've got these back out of their case to finish off the ones that need the last few bits of paint. But also, because all of these guys, for the entire last Mordheim campaign, were on pretty temporary bases. They were just on some wooden circles. And the plan was always to move them onto these really nice flagstone 3D printed bases. Uh, but I never quite got them ready on time. Part of the reason for that was the, the uh, Kickstarter wasn't delivered until at least halfway through the campaign. Uh, but now they are here. So I've printed uh, a ton of them off. At least one of each design, if not more. I said I was I used to be quite anti 3D printed bases. I found that they sort of warped funnily and they didn't really uh, look how I wanted. But uh, Imitation of Life, who is uh, one of my favourite uh, digital sculptors has somewhat changed my opinion on this and I think part of that is because he's doing properly hollowed out bases uh, but with these sort of crossbars and I found they don't really warp uh, at all or and they sit nice and flat and yeah it won me over they do often have a little bit of a, a s on one side a little bit of a spit out and a, and a few little things to tidy up but that's nothing that a couple of seconds with an emery board uh, isn't fixing now, normally, I would print these, print the models, and glue them together before any paint went down. But for this lot, I'm going to have to do something that's slightly different. And I have been having a bit of an experiment um, with getting these guys back off of here. And it's not too difficult. I purposely used sort of very minimal, just little tiny dabs of super glue uh, to get these off. And I think we should be okay to get these reattached to the bases. Uh, but first things first. I think we want to get these bases painted up. So my plan is to get these bases all fully sprayed up and dry brushed uh, up to something that looks a bit like this and then very carefully use a scalpel to knock the feet off the existing little wooden discs and then glue the two together and hopefully we won't have any problems. Just while I'm getting those sprayed up is that another way of doing the bases. Obviously we can print the base, print the model, glue them together or what we're doing now. Um, is that these Nurglings, now these are the Nurglings I wanted to use initially, which is why I sort of painted and based these ones, though I do really like these ones from Warp Miniatures. Um, so these were the ones I specifically wanted because they've got a bit more of a circusy vibe to them. But I was worried about getting them glued down, especially temporarily. For instance, this one is Johnny stood on the floor by one foot. So it's uh, quite a delicate thing. These ones, however, I just threw the bases into Blender and the models and I've actually merged these so these aren't glued on these were printed all in one piece with the feet actually part of the uh, base just merged straight through and then printed in one piece yeah so uh, I'm hoping that that will make them a lot more stable okay so the first step to getting these painted is I got them primed uh, prime these in the color forge standard gray uh, which happens to be color matched to Mechanica's standard grey. So I could, I've just filled in some gaps on this one, but you know, you can brush over that and that is identical to the, the bases underneath. And that is actually a quite impressive colour match. Um, while I was there, I also just gave the bottoms of the bases and therefore some of the rims uh, a blast with the black just to fill that in and. Uh, Maybe save some time painting the rims, but mostly just to sort of neaten up the bottoms a bit rather than having them like that, uh, which looks fine. I mean, there's a problem with that because you don't see it when it's just stood up, but I think it's just a little bit neater, isn't it? I think sometimes with dry brushing stuff like this as well, I've got you've gone for this sort of flat brush. This is from uh, the range, uh, quite cheap brush. I think that this came in a pack of a few sizes um, and worked out like about a quid, I think. Uh, so fairly cheap brush, but they're nice these gold ones. They're quite uh, Do they have a name on them? No, they're blank 
uh, yeah, I like these for sort of dry brushing, sort of flat things like this. Next up, we're going to use this uh, Dawnstone. I really like this color. I don't buy a lot of uh, Citadel layer ones, but the uh, yeah, this has sort of won me over for a few different things. I'm going to go for quite a generous dry brush on this. Oh, maybe not that generous. There you go, something a bit like that. Okay, they're all done. Uh, one thing I did notice is that I'd neglected these edges. Uh, so on a few of them, they were even black still. So making sure that we get these little overhang bits, which I think is quite cute. I think they look quite good when they're uh, finished. And it is quite a, a subtle sort of highlight, this one. Even I'm putting quite a lot of paint on. We're mostly just leaving the standard grey in the cracks and sort of nooks and crannies. Getting most of these flat bits with the new one. Okay, next up, we're going to hit it with some Celestia Grey. This should give a lot more contrast. Something a bit like that. Now, it doesn't... It seems strange to me. I use this as a base for white often. Uh, this is coming up. And it's actually a lot paler, which I think is probably why on this one, I think I hit it too hard, but we ended up with a white highlight. I think I'm going to have to do that again to get the sort of details I want off of these. But these have definitely picked up one extra level of detail. It's definitely something. It's a bit plain, isn't it? Uh, it might just because this base is absolutely enormous. Obviously, this is the one for the plague cart. Oh, you see, it starts to look a lot better with a plague cart on it. I'm not convinced this is the way I'm going to finish these. Let's keep going, though. Okay, I've tried a couple of little, of little bits, but we're just going to stick with my original plan. So this is Pro Acryl White. And with this, I want to do the driest of dry brushes. Okay, this isn't really adding anything to the texture. Really, but it is adding a lovely white outline, which I quite like, actually. Oh, now I'm wondering if it's a bit much. So I'm actually really happy with the way those are coming out. They've got the kind of contrast I want except they are a little bit too clean and fresh, I think. But that's fine, because we've got loads of these little cracks with dirt in and cracks all over the place. So I think what we're going to go with is the usual duo of uh, black and brown washes and just sort of pin wash that into some of the gaps, maybe shade a couple of the tiles and basically just weather them. But yeah, I love weathering stuff. Painting things too clean and weathering it is my go-to, I think. Okay, I don't know what I'm specifically doing here, but anywhere where there's this like sand sort of sculpted on, I'm just going to kind of throw the uh, brown in there. And then I'm going to sort of smear it away with my hand, I think, a little bit for the likes of in here. Anywhere where we think a bit of dirt might have collected. Dirty that up. And I think with the null and oil, we're doing something similar. So we've got some good cracks there. And then we've got a low bit there. Throwing a bit more of this on because I think this will mess with it less. And then I'm just going to do the same, trying to remove a little bit of that. We don't, oh, do we just want to give this a wash? No, I don't think so. Maybe the sort of wash and then sort of clean technique might be what I want on these. Put that down on the table now, and I've got that kind of like table level. I'm actually really liking that. So, yeah, that's the sort of thing. We're going to sort of darken with the browns and sort of pin wash with the blacks a bit and just have a play. Playing with the big one at the moment. And uh, I think this idea of just sort of a bit of a bit of brown and then sort of smearing it out as well, it's kind of causing random sort of staining across the, the beautiful crisp clean white that we did. And I think that's exactly what we want. I certainly don't want to replace all of it, but you know, streets are dirty, right? quite liking the way this is going this is definitely more along the lines of what I wanted and that's just the brown for some of them this one there's a load of this sort of sand stuff I don't remember putting sand on this so this must be sculpted onto the base but I do like it uh, I'm actually going in with a bit of rhinox hide just thin down on the thickest bits and then I think before that even dries, I'm going to do go in with the earth shade again. I think that's giving me what I want. So I'm doing the black bits now. Uh, so there's some cracks like there, and there, and then I want that darker in there. And then this whole little row here. And then, wow, 
wiping it off again. And I think that's definitely bringing out some of that. See, there's some little holes up there without taking off too much of those highlights. I think that's, yeah, it's exactly what I need. Okay, so I think I've got these looking the way I want. It's not really showing up on camera as nice as they are showing up on my desk, but I really like in these now. They've got some character to them. So I'm going to try and rebase some of these guys. Here I've got a scalpel with a relatively fresh braid, not a brand new one. I could get a brand new one, but I think having one that's not perfectly razor sharp might be an advantage. And that is easy. Look at that. That just went straight under there. And we've sort of chipped it away off the, the thing. We've got two little puddles of glue on his feet. Let's try that again. This guy's got massive feet. I'm just trying to find a little in. Oh, this one's a lot trickier. So that's one up. And I think from the sounds this is making, we're actually cutting through the wood fibers and not the glue or anything. See, far too much glue used on that one. Uh, now I've got a relatively fresh emery board. And I'm literally just going to give these, these guys a little side shuffle on the emery board. I don't think it has to be perfect because these bases aren't perfect. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm just going to plonk him back down. I'm just going to do the trick uh, that you do with a pub table. And just keep spinning it until it doesn't wobble anymore. There we go. And I've been pretty sparing with the glue again, because I don't think we need much glue to glue these guys down. The paint will separate off the base, I think, before we uh, have the glue. But I don't want too much glue to leave, like, clouding or anything. But yeah, I don't think that was too painful. So I'm going to do that a bunch more times with the rest of these guys. Do you know what, after doing a few of these, I think I've discovered that actually just pulling them off is working best for me. The whole knife thing was a uh, an non-starter. They're doing it that way is possibly leaving a little bit more wood on their feet, so the knife is coming in handy just to sort of shave that off before we get that emery board involved. Okay, that's them all stuck down now. I'm gonna let that glue fully cure before I mess with these too much. Uh, but I think they're working quite nicely because the colors on the bases are still even with the brown on there still pretty cold but the models themselves in the yellow and green is pretty warm i think we've got quite a good sort of contrast here they stand out quite nicely in case you're wondering about uh, the bases these will definitely get reused for something like cactus bases or similar um there's absolutely nothing wrong with them so they'll definitely uh, get reused at some point i'll throw these in my base box Okay, now I've got them glued down and they've set. I'm just going to uh, paint in these base rims. Being careful not to go up onto these stones we've painted. Something a bit like that. And I think that adds a certain bit of finish to the whole look. Happy with that. Okay, after a bit of work, uh, we've not only got the first batch, but also the second batch of minis and nerglings and everything all finished up now oh with the exception of the cart but I've got a little bit more time to work on that and I'm thinking I might replace the wheels and do some of the bits so uh, but the, the core gang is here so like I said we've got the progression between these guys with no armor and then gaining armor later in the campaign as well as options for sort of upgrading some of the regular dudes into heroes like I did last time I'm really happy with the way my new mini tainted one has come out with this stream of corruption this was quite cool it was printed all as one single mini uh, with the base and everything all included uh, printed beautifully like that um, and then the base has been finished off the same way as the rest it was a lot harder to finish the bases when there was something already stuck on 
I don't remember which one it was now. I think it was this guy. Uh, I actually did, from scratch, did the same way as these ones. So he was on a little wooden base. And then once I'd done painting him, or at least painted him to a certain level, I knocked him off and put him back on one of these, which is obviously a lot easier. There is one last stage I want to do, just to a few of them. Uh, we've got some moss. I'm not sure how useful this is going to be, but I'm thinking I could make some tiny little weeds. And then we've got here, so these are beach seeds. And I've used these before. If I just empty a few of them out onto the table. The problem I've got with these is that I collect these, and but you can buy them. Uh, but the problem with collecting them uh, is they start looking like beach catkins, and then you sort of strip them down. But only about half of what the mass is there is what you actually want to use. So it takes a little while to separate out these beautiful little leaf shapes. But they're dead easy to apply once you've got them separated out. I've got a very knackered old paintbrush here. I'm just going to pick a place where I think fancy one. I'm going to cover up a little bit of a blemish that was on this base. I'm just going to use the same paintbrush to pick up a little leaf and just drop that down. I do like these. Uh, I mean, they are a natural thing, so that they'll stick on the PVA really nicely. Uh, but also, they're completely stable. These ones have been in that bag for, I don't know, probably about five years at this point. I bought, I collected quite a lot all in one go. And I've never had any problem with them changing over the years, and I've been using them for forever. And I think that adds a little bit more interest to these bases, which are already pretty cool, uh, and adds something more to sort of death and despair look that we're going for. I don't think, we could do little cracks, bits of grass in the cracks, I think would work, but I'm just interested to see if just tiny amounts of this if we just had a little crack or something like this, how that would look. And I think that works. A little weed growing up from the cracks. A few leaves on there. And I think that's the bases that I am finally happy with. Yeah, I'm going to finally call these done. Loving the leaves. I've tried to collect them in places where the wind would have blown them. Uh, only putting them on the, the flat surfaces. I don't think they'd be right if they were on the raised up bits. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way these bases painted and the way they, uh, yeah, the way we finished them. I think it's, they're looking fantastic. They have changed my mind on printed bases. And I think one of the main differences is, is these imitation of life bases have these hollow bottoms and these crosses. Um, I really hate sort of flat bottomed bases when they're this kind of deep ones. I always find something with a bit of a hollow. It tends to just sit on more terrain and just tends to work better. Um, these have printed out really round and nice. They've not sort of warped out. There is some just lips on the side that they got printed down on. Uh, but filing has fixed sort of the majority of that problem. And I don't think it's actually visible. So unless you know exactly where you're looking and you know to rub your finger on it, once they're painted and stuff, there's no real obvious sort of malformation. I think the nice cold colours I've done these contrasted against the sort of bright and warm colours uh, that the models are in uh, to make the models stand out. So that's really nice. And it's just, yeah, it's changed my thought on 3D printing bases. And it's also changed my thoughts on sticking a model straight down to a base like this. Uh, I'm going to be much more open in the future, I think, to... Uh, just using some sort of temporary base. I already do things, like I said, uh, such as sticking stuff to cork temporarily, uh, but that's generally just for like a one-off model I want to do a nice job on. Something like this, like a little wall band, I would probably just stick straight to the bases normally like I did with the first couple that I did. But yeah, no, it's a lot easier to paint a base like this straight down. So yeah, I've definitely learned a lot and I would definitely use imitation life bases again, I think, uh, if you did more sort of textured ones. I quite like to see pirate ones, to be honest. And I think my Mordheim gang are looking pretty sweet. And I can't wait to go out and get them on the table. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.